All right, so what is gravity? Who understands what gravity is? Pressure. So most probably we stand up and... Our desire is we want all teachers to be able to do practicals in their classrooms. So the resources that we provide to teachers are all based around simple materials that are locally available in Ghana. Water bottles, balloons, rubber bags, straws, all of these things. We just help teachers use them in a creative way to show the syllabus topics. Oh, they are not expensive. They are our locally made materials. They are locally made materials. Things that you can just find within the environment. It's not the matter of you going to buy anything so big. You can easily get them around the environment. This one and the It's supposed to do one after the other. Okay. We are trying to move a piece of wire using electromagnetism. And we're using a magnet together with a, with a battery. So we're trying to teach the kids more about recycling and reusing stuff so we could save and reduce litter. After it's done, the kids can also go home and replicate the same things and the learning process continues. So we work with the Ghana Education Service and organize district-wide workshops for science teachers. Um, so we work with their district science coordinator, book our venue, call the teachers, and gather as many teachers from the district together that we can and spend the day with them going over as basically as many different hands-on activities as we can fit in the day before they get exhausted. Um, so we just share ideas for ways they can teach the syllabus, the national syllabus, same topics but with hands-on activities. It's reduced my talking and it's reduced the work I would normally would have done. The kids get so excited and they do basically everything for you. Penn is a social enterprise. We were some MIT students trying to think of ways that we could share the same style of hands-on learning that we were getting to experience at MIT with students in the places where it seems to be the hardest in terms of material resources. How do you teach experientially if you don't have stuff to work with? It's going to help them because some of them are going to take it as vocations. Some of them are also, um, it's going to help them to further their education. We're trying to scale this style of hands-on experiential learning and we're doing that by working with teachers. So we see the teacher as the agent of change for making this change happen. So we work with teachers, each of whom easily teaches 100 students um, per year. And we've now even started training trainers to teach teachers to teach students so that we can reach the scale even faster. <laughs> Ooh, the outcome benefit is very great. These children are able to recollect whatever they have learned easily. These children are able to manipulate objects themselves. These children, are, they can learn themselves on their own without you, the teacher, uh, necessarily telling them the stuff. And it's opening up their scope of mind. 